Well, that felt like the end of an era. How's it going, guys? Uh, I know I don't look great right now, but you'll you'll have to excuse me for that. Um, that is the first time in a very, very long time that I legitimately feel like crying after a loss. Um, I would say probably the first time since since I was like 11 years old. This, this, okay. This game, it was obviously back and forth. It was a great game to watch if you're a neutral fan. Um, and if I wasn't a fan of one of the teams, I would surely have an appreciation for the way that game played out. But, um, yeah, yeah, I can't do it right now, guys. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> the story of this game, the story of this loss, this devastating, potentially season-ending loss. I, I don't know. There are six games left, da-da-da, blah, 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 whatever. There are six games left. I understand. It doesn't look good right now. Things would have looked good if we had won this game. That's all I know right now. And, you know, before this game started and after the first few minutes of this game, I, I wasn't even going to get mad or disappointed. I was just going to be like, well, it's just not our year. We have too many injuries. Uh, the offensive line didn't come together like we were hoping. Um, we couldn't replace a few guys like I thought we could. I, I was just going to be like, whatever. We were down 14 nothing after a few minutes, and I was like, okay, it's going to be that game. It wasn't that game, and now I have something to actually be furious about, because here I am after a 34-31 loss where my kicker kicked a 52-yard field goal with two seconds left, except he only kicked it 51 yards. So that's how close it was. We were a yard away from at least getting overtime. Um, we were a end-of-half field goal away from sending it to overtime. However you want to slice this shit. <sighs> Two guys. Two people that really need to be talked about in this video. Number one. Maybe a little controversial, but that's fine. Russell Wilson. The numbers are going to say he played a pretty good game. Uh, 26 completions, 260 yards, a couple of touchdown passes. Uh, he, he led a couple of scoring drives late in the game at the end of the fourth quarter that almost sent the game into overtime. 86 rushing yards. He ran for a bunch of, like, I think he ran for seven first downs. He is the offense right now. And everybody's going to wake up in the morning if they didn't watch, people who didn't watch this game, they're going to wake up in the morning, look at those numbers and say he played pretty good, but that is not championship level football. Um, throwing that pick on the second offensive play of the game, uh, 10 yards behind the receiver right to Desmond Trufant, that is not championship football. Fumbling the ball at your own 10 yard line giving Atlanta basically a free touchdown. It's not good enough, guys. I knew going into this game that Wilson was going to have to be a superstar in this game for us to win. And he was good, but the mistakes, they're too much. And I'm going to hold him accountable for the way he played in this game. He played great for most of it, but it's those little mistakes. It's the two turnovers that happened early in this game first 20, 25 minutes probably, just, you know, stupid, careless turnovers, you look like you don't even really know what you're doing out there, and you combine that with the final scoring drive where you put the team in position to kick a field goal, but you kept throwing the ball in bounds, so the clock keeps running when you know you have no timeouts, <clears throat> and because of that, you don't give your team an opportunity to score a touchdown or kick an easier field goal because the clock is running after every successful play, so what am I going to say? He needs to be better, and I'm not calling for his benching. I'm not calling for a new quarterback next year. That's ridiculous. He is this offense. <clears throat> he gave 85% of a great game. 
but we needed a hundred percent tonight and the turnovers uh, the turnovers they kill you in a game like this Matt Ryan didn't turn the ball over that that was the main difference between those two they both played good games but Matt Ryan held on to the frickin football so that's one number two might even be more controversial I whatever I'm gonna call it like I see it I'm going to be preemptive I'm going to be proactive I'm not going to let the bad things happen and then talk about them I'm going to talk about them as I see them develop Pete Carroll Pete Carroll's might be at this point he probably is the greatest coach in Seahawks history honestly who's even second place whoever is second place whoever you want to say you know Mike Holmgren or Chuck Knoll whatever it's a pretty distant second place, but tonight we're about the worst three hours of his um, <clears throat> of his tenure as a Seattle Seahawks head coach. The worst three hours. Um, I'll give him a little bit of credit. We abandoned the running game when it wasn't working. Uh, J.D. McKissick was semi-effective as a running back. Mike Davis was okay. Eddie Lacy didn't really get any carries in this game. We got away from the running game when we needed to, and appreciation for that. We've got wasting two timeouts in the second half, which we really could have used on our last drive trying to tie the game or maybe even win the game. <clears throat> he wastes one so we can run a third and 12 play that was a screen pass that went for two yards. Just take the fucking penalty. Please, I will trade five yards for a timeout in a close game. Uh, he wastes one by doing a stupid challenge that had no chance of being overturned. Just um, a complete lack of understanding of the game situation. And, of course, we have one of the dumbest plays in recent NFL memory. So, my team gets to be responsible for another one of those, so that's wonderful. Kicking a chip shot field goal with Blair Walsh right before the end of the second half. Fake with uh, seven seconds left. Pitch it to Luke Wilson. He loses four yards. Even if he converts, the clock's going to run out. We're not going to get any points. Um, I, I like taking chances. I like being creative. I like trick plays. I like all that shit, but somebody's going to have to describe to me the potential upside of running a pitch to a tight end with seven seconds left in the half on a fourth and one from your field goal um, arrangement. Coaches make mistakes. Every coach in the NFL makes mistakes, but I want at least there to be an explanation. I don't know and in fact, I'm pretty sure I already know Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll, there's no explaining that. There's no getting away from the fact that that um, took three points off the board for no reason in a game we lost by three points. Uh, they asked Pete Carroll about it at halftime, and he had no good explanation. All he could say was we were trying to score. Um... Obviously, I can't blame him for the injuries. I mean, Mike Davis, he was having a pretty good start to the game, and then he got hurt, which, you know, another, you know, bit of uh, bullshit that we have to deal with this year. The injuries just keep coming and coming. Every time we see something good in our backfield, we just lose it to fucking injury. So that's not Pete Carroll's fault. It's not Pete Carroll's fault that Shaquille Griffin got hurt early in this game, and Jeremy Lane's trying to cover Julio Jones, and Byron Maxwell is out there after just getting off the frickin' couch, and, you know, Bradley McDougal isn't as good as Camp. That's not Pete's fault, but he has the ability to control other things in this game to try to make up for that, and today he... Miserable failure on the part of Pete Carroll, and... More than any player on this team, Pete Carroll lost us this game, and I'm going to go ahead and go big. And people are going to get on me in the comments for this. I know. This is obviously a reaction. The game ended freaking 15 minutes ago, guys. Excuse me. I think it's time to consider putting Pete Carroll out to pasture. 
oldest coach, oldest coach in the NFL. <clears throat> there are reasons to believe that his mentality about football doesn't fit in with the modern game, and he's not adapting, or he doesn't want to. This isn't Bill Belichick who adapted when the NFL changed. I think Carroll, maybe you can force him to do it, but he doesn't want to do it. Um, and after tonight, and after some of the goofy shit that I've seen this team do this whole season, I don't know if it's worth it to keep him around for, you know, another year older. I mean, that, that doesn't even touch the fact that this team, again, has 10 penalties tonight, or 9 or 10 penalties, on pace to set an all-time NFL record. We are on pace to set the all-time penalty record for a single season. Let that sink in. Let that let that roll around in your brain for a minute here before you try to defend Pete Carroll here. I know the positives. I know the good stuff. And I know next year, if we have another head coach, or five years from now we're going to have another head coach, I'm probably going to bitch about him too. And then he'll be like, oh, I'll bet you wish you still had Pete Carroll. I want the Pete Carroll from five years ago. This guy's losing his mind. I mean, he, his team has no discipline. Um... They, they do some of the goofiest, strangest stuff, and I question his sanity. You have to do it after you lose a game like that, guys. And I don't know, maybe I'm being unfair, but <clears throat> I just had to sit there and watch my team lose a game, largely in part because we tried a fake field goal with seven seconds left in a half instead of kicking a chip shot. And um, that's pretty much the story of this game for me. Uh, Pete, I'm really, really going to take him to task for this one. This was some of the worst coaching that I've seen Pete do since he got here. This was his worst game. Um, look, Jimmy Graham, he dropped a touchdown, but he had a big game. Sorry, guys, I got a little fired up there. Tyler Lockett, monster game on special teams. Paul Richardson, great game receiving. Uh, Doug Baldwin, I, I feel like he still might be hurt a little bit. I don't know. It's just not there the way it was for him in the past. Um, Sheldon Richardson had a monster game. I would love to be able to keep that dude, but, you know, forget it. Bobby Wagner, monster as always. Um... I, I can't hate on the defense, guys. I know the defense, they gave up like 10 third down conversions tonight. The defense was aggravating as hell on third down. They didn't give up a lot of yards, but that was because, you know, Atlanta scored on a short field and they scored a defensive touchdown. Realistically, the defense sucked tonight, too. I got to lay off those guys. They're missing so much. I can't lay off this offense. I can't lay off this coaching staff. So that's, that's, that's what I can say right now. I am seriously thinking about life after Pete Carroll at this point because I think it's coming faster than any of us can imagine. I'm not even talking about firing him. He might walk away this offseason. Uh, other than that, uh, referees, fuck you guys. I, I know I get on this team for committing penalties. Some of that is bullshit. Some of that is straight bullshit. Sheldon Richardson got called for holding on a play where he got, where he basically just fell on the ground. And meanwhile, they can't spot a ball right. It was just a complete shit show. It was like I was watching Pac-12 football out there. So yeah, you guys suck too. Um, yeah, I can I can put this game on you guys too a little bit because in a game this close, every little bit matters. And yeah, I was not um, happy with their performance either. So. Uphill battle, guys. Six and four. You got to win at least ten games to have any chance of making the playoffs this year. So we got to win four of our last six, possibly five. And we just blew a real opportunity. Now, look, part of me says that our defense would have given up 60 points if Atlanta needed to score 60 points in this game. I understand. At the end of the day, this team had an opportunity at the end to make a great comeback. Shit. They held themselves back. All right. So, yeah, uh, P. Carroll, uh, I'm about done with you. However much hate that brings me. Uh, Russell Wilson, get your shit straight. And uh, onward and upward.
see you guys later. Gonna go live on PS4 at some point tonight, I think. Uh, Resident Evil 4, we're doing Assignment Ada, maybe some mercenaries, come check me out. If you disagree with my take, let me know, that's fine. I'm being, I'm being emotional right now, I know, but can you blame me? All right, see you guys later.